again, Star Trek fans. A while back, I made a video about my original series, Star Trek Tricorder Build. Since then, I've been lucky to receive more help from some amazing makers who also build tricorders. You can find them on the My Quarter server on Discord and or the Fleet Workshop. Links are down below. Just as a reminder, I started in 2017 by gutting out a Diamond Select tricorder I purchased from Amazon. With some aluminum parts, originally from Russell Harrell, the skeleton is much beefier and better looking. I have since milled duplicate frames from some aluminum flat bar for future builds. The Wan Company is still coming out with their tricorder soon-ish, as they were victims from the chip shortage and other issues, but now they have completed pre-production. Once I get my hands on one of them, I will compare the two side by side in a future video. During this long endeavor, my skills have improved somewhat, which translated to the following improvements. First, the aluminum pieces are now milled more precisely and fit much better. Second, on the head unit, I 3D printed a better and more robust faceplate, which includes three non-functional buttons to keep with the original tricorder design, but opted for a single light display. Third, the 3D printed middle section is better designed and more robust, not to mention more accurate so the buttons and screw holes look more polished. Four, I glued button extensions on the clue so they are easier to press. Five, though probably not necessary, I included a top hood on the clue's light sensor slash colorometer. Six, the cradle for the handheld was 3D printed and covered with leather for a more authentic look and feel. And seven, for the handheld itself, I included a small LED to indicate power and replaced the micro USB charging port with a USB-C. Using the Adafruit Pi Portal Pint and Clue was a wise choice for me. The folks at my quarter are using custom PCBs designed around the Raspberry Pi Zero and other flavors, but I have neither the time, budget, nor skill to follow their lead, at least not yet. Here are the changes I've made to the software of the Pi Portal Pint in the head section. One, the first of three screens is a background map of the Earth Moon orbit. Overlaid our basic information on our Sun, Earth, and Moon. Screen 2, the target, is the Garmin LiDAR light distance sensor. It now displays in meters and is accurate to about 12 meters. Screen 3, or Lambda, is the Adafruit LTR390 UV light sensor that displays a calculated UV index as well as a calculated lux. Inside the head section is an Adafruit mini GPS module. The middle section comprises of two separate boards, an Adafruit Cutie Pie connected to a little screen and the Adafruit mini GPS as described above. This displays the GPS coordinates, though it does take about a minute or two when outside in an open area for that data to be captured. Next to the GPS screen is the Adafruit Clue, which is running a version of the sensor plotter that not Spock helped me with on the last video. The first screen displays the Moray animation GIF by Company A Hill. There are two buttons, right and left, that navigate through each sensor, this time with a little beep. Not Spock also programmed the clue to communicate with the Itsy Bitsy instead of having to go through Adafruit's Blue Fruit system, which was quite inefficient. The clue now shows the following sensor data. Temperature, displayed in Kelvin. This is the internal temperature of the tricorder, but since the unit doesn't get very warm, it is also a pretty good indicator of ambient temperature. Pascals, this measures rough atmospheric pressure. Relative humidity, in percentage. Incident, or illuminance, displays the light value. Lambda, displays the wavelength of light, used as a colorometer. The microphone displays ambient sound in decibels. VOC, or volatile organic compounds, this displays the VOCs captured by the handheld, which is connected via Bluetooth. CO2, though this is a calculated measurement, pulling again from the handheld sensor. Phi beta, 
represents magnetic flux from the built-in magnetometer in the clue. And lastly, the heat camera. This is one of my major achievements of this build. I used AI to help me integrate the MLX 90640 IR thermal camera into the sensor plotter sketch. This replaces the Adafruit AMG IR thermal camera that I used before on the last build. The MLX 90640 displays minimum and maximum temperatures as well as a heat map. This took some doing, but I'm very excited to have this in my tricorder. To recap, the handheld device is using an SGP30 gas sensor connected to an Adafruit Itsy Bitsy. Using Bluetooth, the Itsy Bitsy talks to the clue and displays the VOCs and CO2. That's pretty much it for my upgrades. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to help out any way I can. There are links below to my GitHub, which has all the code, including the older versions, and hardware used in this build. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see y'all around soon.